Hi, I like Dragon Ball. A lot. A lot, a lot. So much that I've watched nearly every series except for GT and Heroes more than twice. And in my rewatches, I always seem to come to the exact same conclusion. Goku Black sucks! <laughs> no, wait. Different video. The Boo Saga is easily the weakest in the original series. It's too long, has pointless characters, and a villain who I think might be tied with Omega Shenron for most boring in all of Dragon Ball. And instead of formatting this video like my Stardust Crusaders video, I'll be going point by point. I'll summarize the plot and explain what I like and don't like along the way. I'll do this so you can understand how badly this arc drops in quality. This is the only way I could think to organize my thoughts in a productive manner. So this video is probably going to be long, so grab a snack, a drink, and a pillow to punch as you scream at your monitor, because chances are this video will piss you off. Let's go! Part 1, The Great Saiyaman Saga. Seven years have passed since Cell was defeated, and we are immediately introduced to adult Gohan, even though he's 17. And I actually like him a lot. I like that his goal is to become a scholar like his mom wanted, and I like his empathy. As Gohan is going to school, he sees an armed robbery taking place, and knowing that these guys will kill in order to get their way, Gohan decides that he must do something. And I love this because it's a clear contrast from his father. Goku does fight to protect lives, but often only that of his friends, while Gohan fights because he feels like he can protect everyone, which is pretty neat. So the great Saiyaman is born. And I love it, I love how goofy it is. Honestly, it brings new life to the character for me. I mean, I honestly don't understand why this character gets so much hate. And on the way, we get introduced to Videl Satan. Yeah, that's right, that's how I'm gonna pronounce it. I don't want to get demonetized in this video. The daughter of best boy, Mr. Hercule, who takes it upon herself to protect the world like how she thinks her father did. I really like her. She's a brilliant foil to Gohan's innocent and goofy nature. I also like that she's one of the few female characters in the franchise to seek out strength. And I'm talking about DBZ, so, so these two don't count. Sorry, Cauliflaw. But upon learning Gohan's identity, she realizes that both of their fathers have won the World Martial Arts Tournament, and she challenges him to a fight there. But first, she wants to learn how to fly, cause who doesn't? And once again, I, I just love her character. Both Videl and Gohan realize that they have a crush on each other is always fun to watch. And as a bonus, we also get the only explanation of how he works in this mini art. Jesus Christ, Toriyama, wait till the last second to explain how your characters can do things. But whatever. Another thing I like is how Chi Chi is characterized, at first as a concerned mother who was worried that the city girl will steal her son away, but then learning that her sons are happy when she's around, and oh wait, I said sons. Ugh. I don't like Goten. Let me explain. A good way to show that time has passed in your story is to show how relationships have advanced over the years. The Saiyan Saga did this really well by introducing Gohan, but if I think Gohan is good and Goten is bad, well then why? I'll tell you, Gohan was a distinct character when he was introduced, and most of the time he acted like a normal kid, with a tendency to break people's fucking spines! But Gohan, for me at the very least, was relatable. We've all been kids, and we've all had to face challenges that seemed impossible at the time, and I feel like that's why Gohan worked. It was sloppy at times, sure, but it got the job done. Goten just acts like Kid Goku. He's given little to no reason to explain why he even exists. And while Gohan lost a good 80% of his fights, Goten is OP as fuck. So much so that he's able to maintain the Super Saiyan form, which doesn't make sense. And what makes less sense is that he got the form when he was sparring with Chi Chi. What? <laughs> Chi Chi wasn't even strong enough to make Piccolo flinch but can turn this seven-year-old into a Super Saiyan. All right. And what's worse is that we already get introduced to a kid character in Trunks, who was written a million times better. We already got to see what Trunks would become in a dystopian setting. And here we get to see him grow up as a pampered brat. And that's amazing because of the contrast between the two. It also even makes more sense for Trunks to get Super Saiyan because at the very least he trains in the gravity chamber. And I have a very specific problem with how transformations in general are handled in this arc, but I'll get to that later. So with the power of flight under her belt, Videl decides to start her own training, and at the same time Goku explains to Gohan from Otherworld that he will be coming back. Gohan is overjoyed and tells all of Goku's friends, including Vegeta, who wants to fight him again. Big surprise. And they all prepare for the tournament. What could possibly go wrong, part two? Ah! Everything goes wrong! <laughs> 
kind of. We gang meet up at the tournament, and Goten has his one good scene. Goku freaks out about Android 18 and Krillin being married, which, side note, I genuinely wish Android 18 played a bigger role in this arc. Her no-nonsense attitude would have made a nice contrast to everyone else, but whatever. They eat a lot of food because comedy, I guess, and then they meet this guy, his name is Shin, or the Supreme Kai if you're a filthy American who might actually be the most useless character of all time. But we'll get to that later. Shin warns the gang about these two bald guys with sick tats named Spopovich and Yamu, who are definitely up to something. They're going to tattoo Mr. Satan. But without further ado, it's tournament time, and I'll only cover the relevant fights because I don't want to waste your time with pointless analysis. I'd much rather waste your time with rants about a show that stopped airing 20 years ago. Hercule shows the crowd an accurate depiction of the Cell Saga, and Goku is the only one who appreciates this work of modern art. Fight 1, Goten vs. Trunks. It's established that they finally made a kids edition of the tournament, probably after receiving complaints that a child could fight a grown man in the tournament. Goten and Trunks both easily make it to the finals because of course they do. So the fight, for the most part, is pretty standard, with the boys clashing over and over again. I mean, I like these parts where like they shoot back to Videl as she realizes that she's completely outmatched because, well, if she can't even follow the movements of children, what is it going to be like fighting these adults? Probably pretty bad. So then we get to this point where Trunks starts firing key blasts, and Goten tries to retaliate but can't do it, so Trunks bans them. And I actually really like this moment because it shows that while Trunks is a brat, he's still willing to stand up for his friend. I honestly wish we got more moments like this. Anyway, the fight's pretty standard with some shenanigans going on, with Trunks inevitably winning because he cheated. Just like his dad! Kind of, not really. His dad doesn't really cheat. Fight 2. Piccolo versus Shin. Alright, so let's talk about the adult tournament for a second. See, that's funny. Because we're actually going to be talking about the adult tournament for the rest of this segment. I'm so smart. This is the first fight, which it isn't a gag fight. So I haven't talked about Piccolo yet, and that's because this is the first time he does anything in this arc. So allow me to quickly explain that Piccolo is a contender for biggest badass of all time. He almost killed Goku, took a hit from Nappa like a champ, went toe to toe with Frieza and beat the shit out of Android 17. He has been shown time and time again to be just as strong as the Saiyans. And that's why this fight pisses me off. This could have shown us what Shin was made of. Apparently he's about as strong as Cell, but we never get to see it. And more importantly, we're told that Piccolo has been training for seven years and we never get to see it. Piccolo literally looks at this guy, shits himself, and forfeits. What the hell? My guy has been done dirty, and I wish I could say things get better later, but I'd be lying. Fight 3, Vidal vs. Popovich. Ah uh, yeah, time for the fight everyone remembers. Side note, I really love the title of this episode. It's just all like, yup, uh, this is the one where the teenage girl gets beaten up by a muscular dude. Uh, a round of applause for whoever decided uh, that title. Alright, so Videl is eager to prove herself to Gohan because she feels outclassed in every way. The exact same feelings Spopovich used to have. See. This is an often forgotten fact, but Hercule is in fact a martial artist, and originally got his title of world champion because of his skill. For the most part, the final match of the tournament that Hercule won was Spopovich versus Hercule, but Spopovich had been experiencing the side effects of food poisoning at the time, allowing Hercule to win easily. Enraged by his loss, Spopovich found a man who could give him power beyond his wildest dreams. Goldie Roger! Yo! No, it's not, it's not, it's not him. But anyway, he got immense power and became a D-list character. Oh well, what you gonna do about it? But my point being that Spopovich is a monster of a man, and this fight shows it. Every attack Videl throws at him is easily deflected and punished by a powerful blow. Seeing someone that he cares about dearly get beaten to a bloody pulp, Gohan becomes enraged and almost interferes, but Goku stops him, and Gohan can't do anything to stop the destruction of the girl he loves. I like this fight. I love 
that the thing that Gohan is consistently used to win fights over and over again, being his rage, can't be used to save Videl. Dragon Ball doesn't really use unique situations like this, because characters are usually able to interfere when things get badly, but, you know, nice change of pace. But, yeah, I actually really like this. Alright, f*** for Gohan vs. Kabito. So you probably noticed that I haven't talked about Kabito once, and there is a reason for that. Anyway, this fight fucking sucks. It's another non-fight, but instead of Gohan refusing to fight, it's Kabito, who's like Shin's bodyguard or something. So Kabito asks Gohan to go full power, and Gohan's like, Are you sure, bro? I'm like a maximum Saiyan. And Kabito's like, Dude, you look like a Power Ranger that got lost in the closet. Enraged, Gohan activates Super Saiyan 2, and is going to kill Kabito. But then out of nowhere, Yamu comes out of nowhere, and sucks Gohan dry. With the vacuum cleaner. It, it's never really explained how, how they do it, but wh whatever. They steal Gohan's energy, and then Shin explains that these guys are servants of an evil wizard named Bobbity, and they need Gohan's energy to awaken Majin Buu. Wait a second. If Kabito knew Gohan's energy would make Yamu suck him, then why would he. Then why would he actually. Then why would he make Gohan power up? If, if he knew that these guys wanted his energy, why get any of the Z Fighters involved? The next few episode, the next few episodes show that Bobbity's minions are pretty weak. So why didn't you two take care of it? I mean, that's why I call shit an idiot. Also, why did you stop taking care of Universal Threats? Frieza literally committed mass murder on a galactic scale. Cell was going to destroy the universe. Shin, what the fuck? You're supposed to be protecting this shit! Anyway, Goku and the gang are gonna go with Shin. Gohan gives Videl a sensu bean, and there's this nice scene where Hercule realizes that the man who was saving his daughter was the one who killed Cell, so that's... that's cool. But are you ready for some dumb stuff? I know I am! Okay, so Goten and Trunks have decided to commit identity fraud and fight in the adult tournament. Ah, this is the first instance of comic relief stopping the progression of the plot, and it gets much worse. Fight 5, Fortnite. At this point, you're probably confused. Shouldn't we be following our cast? And to that I answer, YES! But instead we witness this. Android 18 is the only combatant remaining in the tournament, meaning she has to fight the TAMP. The, the TAMP. The CHAMP. But right as they're about to score off, Goten and Trunks enter the mix-up, and it's a really boring fight. Until Android 18 cuts their hood in half with a Kienzon. I actually like this scene because it shows that Krillin and 18 are far closer than they appear to be. But trust me, Goten and Trunks are a symptom of a coming virus. Anyway, Android 18 loses to Mr. Satan because duh. Anyway, back to the plot. Bobbity does the villain trope by killing Spopovich and Yamu. And this is a massive missed opportunity. You could just have Gohan fight Spopovich, kind of like how Goku fought Tambourine. I feel like it would help his arc of trying to help people, because while empathy is a human emotion, so is the drive for revenge. This could be the moment where Gohan and Videl switch roles for a second, having Gohan be the irrationally angry one for a second and Videl the voice of reason. I personally think that'd be cool as shit, but that's just me. You could just kill him, fine. Anyway, speaking of Videl, she figures out that Gohan killed Cell, and then the biggest mistake in the entire arc so far happens. Videl and Gohan split up. This is a mistake because their characters are deliberate foils to each other. They were deliberately written to undermine and bounce off of each other. And it's not exactly like you need to be relevant to be there for fights in Z. Just look at Krillin on Namek. He was still relevant and because he planned around everything. Just look at Piccolo and the Cell games. He was still relevant even though he wasn't power-wise. Videl could have played a very similar role to this, and I think it's a shame that she was left out. But anyway, the gang reaches Bobbity's castle, which definitely doesn't look like a sex toy. Also, quick side note, 
If our main characters can all sense key, why didn't they sense this castle slash spaceship before? It's literally stated that Deborah is as strong as Perfect Cell. And if these guys freaked out when they sensed Frieza's ship, why couldn't the same thing happen here? Also, I'm pretty sure Shin can breathe in space. Couldn't he have thrown a conveniently large meteorite in the way of the ship? But whatever. They try to confront Bobbity, but Deborah, or as I like to call him, the Crimson Chin, spits on both Piccolo and Krillin. Gross! But then it gets even worse as they start turning into statues. Bro, don't fuck with him, he's got the stony spit! Deborah explains that he's the Demon King, and seeing a poser like Piccolo claim that he was a demon pisses him off. So anyway, Bobbity and company run away into his castle. And right here is where I want to mention that Bobbity sucks. Everything he does is the same cliche bullshit we've seen a hundred times over. He's just annoying, and his role could have easily been replaced with Deborah. Bobbity's looking for an ancient evil, and he's going to use it to take over the universe. Now, I don't know much about demons, but doesn't that sound like something a demon king would want? But whatever. Our heroes meet a frogman who eats key. This could have been a pretty cool concept for a fight, because all of our characters rely on everything for key, whether it be a key blast or super saiyan. This could have been a really cool opportunity for Goku to show that he's a martial artist first and foremost, like the Go like the Goku vs. Kale and Khalifla fight in Dragon Ball Super. Side note, and this is completely unrelated to the rest of the video, Goku vs. Kale and Khalifla is the best fight in all of Dragon Ball Super, don't even at me. Okay, ba back to what I originally recorded as part of an on-topic video. But Goku just make makes him explode by giving him a lot of key, and that, that's cool, I guess. Next up is this guy named Pui Pui, or Pee Pee. Get it? Cause he stinks. And now for the main event, Gohan versus Debora. So I know I've sounded pretty condescending so far, but allow me to tell you about a fight I actually like. So it's Gohan's turn to fight, and Debora is the last of Bobdi's minions. So the fight starts, and Deborah starts off with some air slash attacks. Gohan dodges them and hides in the water, throwing out a key blast. And right as Deborah is able to sense the key blast, Gohan appears behind him and kicks him into a wall. I love this piece of choreography. It's very reminiscent of a similar attack Goku used against Frieza. Deborah throws some rocks at Gohan, but he isn't scathed as he becomes a Super Saiyan. This is the first time Gohan has been able to fight someone in this arc, and I love that it shows that this is the first time he's taken a fight seriously in seven years. Because Gohan starts decimating Deborah. Deborah gets all pissy and says the equivalent of, This isn't even my final form! And powers up. Now it seems like they're even in strength. As Deborah blasts Gohan into a lake, he tries to use the same trick he used earlier, but Deborah reads him like a book. Can I mention that this fight is amazing? Every earlier fight has been pretty one-sided in this. This is the first and only struggle fight in this arc that doesn't take eight years. So, yeah. Also, I like how it shows that each character is learning their opponent's style. Which, um... Anyway, Deborah urges Gohan to use his full power as he spits on one of his gloves. And Gohan avoids becoming a public bird toilet by quickly taking off his glove. I just like the subtle ways Gohan's intellect is shown here. He's, he already saw what Deborah's spit can do. And by having him take off his glove, it shows that he pays attention to detail. Again, it's nothing massive, but it's a nice touch. They continue their brawl as Deborah tries to get the upper hand by summoning a sword, and Gohan narrowly dodges getting his head chopped off. Now Gohan's strategy changes to that of being agile. As Deborah slices the scenery around him, this seems to work well enough until Gohan gets cornered and has to break the sword himself. And then out of nowhere, Deborah gives up. What the fuck? I'm almost as pissed as Gohan here! I actually enjoyed that fight! And kinda wanted to see how Gohan would beat Deborah because they seem pretty equal in power. And Gohan would have gotten revenge for like Piccolo and Krillin, and it would have been a fun fight, but. Oh well. Maybe next time. So anyway, Bobbity is pissed off because all of his men are really weak or like cowards like Deborah until he got an idea. An awful idea. Bobbity got a wonderful awful idea and suddenly vegeta bursts out in red electricity screaming in pain part three vegeta's a bad boy 
Why did I write that? It's revealed by Shin that Vegeta is being called to Babidi's side, his strong need to prove himself against Goku being the reason for this. Vegeta has constantly been one-upped by Goku, and now Babidi is offering him the power he'll need to defeat Goku. Vegeta is unable to refuse despite how painful it is for him. And I like how Vegeta falls to evil once again. Thus, throughout the arc, we've consistently seen Vegeta's anxiety that he won't be able to settle the score with his rival, but now he's accepting this offer. And I also love this because it continues the theme of the series, progression through struggle. Each time a character has reached a new peak of power, they have been shown struggling for it, which makes it feel earned. In contrast, the villains don't work for their power. Frieza was born with godlike strength, Cell gained his power by absorbing the androids, and now Vegeta has gained this power through Babidi. I love this not only for the theming, but it also makes sense for Vegeta's character. But anyway, Vegeta asks Babidi to send them back to the tournament ring, and they are. Goku immediately tells Vegeta that he needs to cut this out because they need to stop Babidi from awakening Majin Buu. Vegeta doesn't listen and blows up some of the spectators. Oh shit. Vegeta is taking this shit seriously. Hey, it's me, future me. While I was editing this video, I completely forgot to mention this moment in the script that always irritated me about Majin Vegeta. So while they're at the world tournament, there's this moment where Vegeta essentially explains why he's doing what he's doing, which isn't needed because we as an audience already know because A, his entire character is based around fighting Goku, but B, because he already told us. And I don't know if this is exclusive to Z, if it was removed in Kai, or if it was even in the manga, but there's this one moment where Shin asks Vegeta, why is he doing this? because Shin is dense, as we've already established. So, Vegeta talks about why he hates Goku. These include beating him, which Goku never did, um, making him a good guy, which, no, if you were a good guy, you wouldn't be blowing up people, and lastly, saving his life. And I get that it's not really supposed to make sense because Vegeta's full of pride at this moment, but if I just replaced all of that with this clip from Beauty and the Beast... Dismissed, rejected, publicly humiliated. Why, it's more than I can bear. As a joke, it would get the same point across. And what's worse is that we already know what he's doing. It also led to this dumb clip. I'm sure you've already heard it. Meaningless, huh? What do you know of meaningless? And I feel like that's unneeded, especially because later on in the Goku vs. Vegeta fight, we get a better explanation as to why Vegeta hates Goku, which we've already established several times over. I kind of feel like Toriyama needed to have a reason for Vegeta hating Goku, but he hates Goku because Goku is a nobody who consistently one-ups him. You don't need to make anything deep around that. So I don't understand why they felt the need to recap all of this if we already know it. Especially because all you basically need is Vegeta to blow up the crowd and for Goku to say, Stand back, I got this. That's it. So yeah. Bobby tries to control Vegeta to kill Shin, but Vegeta refuses, only wanting to fight Goku. So Goku tells Shin and Gohan to stop Boo's resurrection. Goku and Maji Goku and Maji Goku and Vegeta meet in combat to finally settle their score. This fight starts and they both reach Super Saiyan 2? What? Okay, remember when I said I had an issue with how transformations were handled in this arc? Well, this is an example of why. The reason why Super Saiyan works is because of the fact that it represents being pushed to your limit. For Goku, it symbolized that some people aren't worth saving. For Vegeta, it reaffirmed his cockiness, and to him at least, it proved that he was right. And for Gohan, it represented maturity, that he finally realized that he had responsibility as one of the strongest beings in the universe to protect not only himself, but the ones he holds dear. And Super Saiyan 2 worked for Gohan because he realized that he needed to weaponize the rage that had saved him time and time again into one unstoppable force. See, in Dragon Ball, transformations 
for our characters have always been intrinsically linked with their character growth, which is why I feel like they shouldn't have access to this form. The only one in this fight who has grown in character is Vegeta, and Goku hasn't. And you could show a fight between a Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta and a Super Saiyan Goku, but something tells me that that wouldn't be that satisfying. The problem gets much worse later on, so let's just put a pin in it for now. As for the fight, I know I'm gonna piss some people off, but this, this fight sucks. There isn't anything interesting to watch here, just a standard, below average Dragon Ball fight. Hell, I'd argue Goten vs Trunks is a better fight, because at least that fight characterized Trunks in a fun way. But it doesn't work here because, well, the only thing that's characterized here is that Vegeta's evil now. Which, the first fight did way better. Compare this to Goku and Vegeta's first fight. Both of them were put to their limit trying to stop one another. I especially love the beam struggle because of what it represents. Vegeta, the prince, strikes down to show the fact that he will do anything to put people in their place. While Goku, the farm boy, strikes up to show that he doesn't care who you are. If you mess with his friends, he will push himself to the limit to stop you. And I love how at the end, both of them are crippled. And I love that the only reason why Goku survived was because of the friends he made along the way. Their first battle was really good. This is nothing more than a waste of time. Every single scene is recreated over and over again. Vegeta grapples Goku. Goku breaks out with his immense power. Beam struggle. They get thrown into mountains over and over and over again. It's just nothing. Anyway, let's get back to Gohan and Shin. To no one's surprise, they failed horribly. I'm sorry, what else do you want me to say? Also, Goten and Trunks show up for some reason. And at last, everyone's worst fears come true as the tomb of Majin Buu opens. Heh, <laughs> that, that rhymed. Part 4, the Majin Buu Saga. So, as you're wondering, yes, it is about 30 minutes into the video and I am only beginning to talk about the pink bubblegum monster that is the main villain of this arc. Hope you enjoy! I'm gonna stop. So Boo is awakened and he's this guy. I actually love his design. I like his little cape. It reminds me of kids playing superhero. Boo is just a guy who likes candy and will kill people to get it. And right now, that's all he needs to be. This Boo's character isn't the most complex, but it really doesn't have to be, because good Boo is an interesting foil to the main characters. Speaking of, Boo immediately kills Deborah by turning him into candy and eating him, immediately proving that he's the MVP. As Bobbity is perplexed as to what to do with him, he figures out that threats work pretty well and Boo starts to follow him. And Bobbity's first order of business is to have Boo kill Gohan and Shin. Gohan and Shin versus Majin Boo. Gohan, sensing Boo's power, pulls a Deborah and attempts to run away. But Boo cuts them off. And I find this scene to be immensely hilarious. Boo punches Gohan to the ground. Then, Boo, Boo then puts his focus into Shin. Who blows some wind at him or something? Boo then beats the shit out of Shin in a much appreciated scene. Gohan realizes that he, of course, is in a fight, tries to get up, but then gives up halfway through. I can relate. Shin, Shin then tries to look at Boo really hard, but you don't need to be an optometrist to tell that that won't do shit. Boo, of course, takes this as a challenge and shows his terrifying eyes to Shin. Shin gets blown away by the shock and almost kills Bobbity. BASED! And in the meantime, Boo turns Shin into a chair. Gohan is offended by this and kicks Boo. This fight is fucking hilarious. Boo then shows Gohan the door. This fight was pretty good. I like it. Anyway, back to Goku and Vegeta. Goku senses Boo's power and tells Vegeta they should probably stop fighting for like the third time. But this time, Vegeta agrees and asks Goku for a sensu bean. Goku is happy to help, thinking that Vegeta is a good boy, and that together, they will defeat Majin Buu. But surprise, Vegeta's a bad boy, and thinks that he can take on Buu. Sure, buddy. I forgot to mention that Piccolo and Krillin are unfrozen now because Deborah became a fetish piece. Anyway, Goten and Trunks are here to try to fight Buu, but they can't do shit. And then Vegeta arrives. He asks Trunks to give him a hug. The first hug Trunks has ever gotten by his father, which is sad as fuck. 
and then he knocks him out. Goten is obviously pretty pissed off about the whole situation, but Vegeta makes him take a nap, so it's all good. Vegeta then asks Piccolo where he will go when he dies. Piccolo tells Vegeta that he's absolutely 1000% going to hell because he regained his evil form and killed a lot of people. Which is pretty rich coming from the son of the devil, Piccolo. Anyway, Vegeta tells Piccolo to take the kids. This, by the way, is the second thing Piccolo has done in this arc. May I remind you, he is a main character. But anyway, Vegeta is here to fight Boo. Boo versus our boy. Vegeta pledges his love for his wife, son, and... Goku? Oh my god, the ship is canon. It's canon, Toriyama confirmed that it's canon! Oh yeah, he also does a pro gamer move and uses the 200 power move self-destruct. But it is not very effective against bullshit types like Boo. RIP! Mm. Jokes aside, I like this scene in concept. It represents the end of Vegeta's arc, but it's too soon for my taste. His sacrifice has little to no effect on the plot and ends up being reversed later. If they had to- If they had a fight with, with Boo versus Piccolo and Vegeta, that would have been sick as fuck. Both of them have been enemies to Goku, and as previously mentioned, Piccolo hasn't done a damn thing yet. You could have a scene where Vegeta talks to Piccolo and the hug, hug scene right after. But even though this moment is important for Vegeta's arc, it makes no difference in the story, which is... Pretty bad writing. Anyway, Piccolo finally does something useful and kills Bobbity. He then goes to find Goku. Boo regenerates and heals Bobbity because we can't have nice things, now can we? Goku tells Piccolo to regroup everyone on the lookout because Goku has a few more plot devices, I mean tricks, up his sleeve. Anyway, in the meantime, Bobbity destroys some cities and tells the world that he has Majin Buu and he's gonna kill everyone or something. What a compelling villain, am I right? I also forgot to mention that Shin kidnaps Gohan. So everyone thinks Gohan is dead and Boo and Boo is about to destroy West City, which is where the which is where the Dragon Radar is located. And Bulma for some reason acts like it can't be recreated. And I call bullshit on that because in Super, she makes an even better one. What the fuck, Bulma? It's not even the first time you've recreated the Dragon Ra Radar. And then the dumbest shit happens. As you know, in the Cell Saga, Goku introduced a technique called instant transmission, which is basically teleportation. So Goku can easily pop in and out and get the radar, but instead, they send trunks to get it. Why? Why would you send a child in the vicinity of a monster like Boo? But to get Boo's attention away from trunks, Goku teleports in front of Boo to fight him. This situation had a really easy answer, guys. What the fuck? Why did you make this more complicated? Goku versus Majin Buu. I'm gonna be real with you, Chief. This might be the hottest take in the video. This fight sucks. It's bad. It's shit. It's dumb. It's bad. It's so fucking dumb. It's stupid. <sighs> I guess I have to stop beating around the bush and talk about it, right? Okay, so Goku stops Boo and turns Super Saiyan, but Bob, but he's not impressed. Like, as you just turned his hair blonde. Goku reaches Super Saiyan 2, but Bob, but he doesn't give a fuck because the designs look very similar. And then Goku goes even further beyond. After shaking the earth and height and hinting to some dumb bullshit in Dragon Ball GT, Goku reveals his hairdo. And Bobbity is shocked and jealous at the same time because Bobbity is bald. Okay, time to talk about Super Saiyan 3. I hate it. I just... Ugh. Look at its design! Why are his eyebrows gone? Why does he have pupils now? Why, for the love of God, does he have that hair? He looks like Super Sonic. And don't get me wrong, I love Golden Locks as much as the next girl, but like, why are, is it spiky? He just grows! It betrays the theme, it just to... But this time to a larger extent, that Goku obtains this form while being dead. How? Who is there to train with? King Kai? Oh, now it makes sense. King Kai's ripped. Alright, joking aside, 
This is incredibly out of character for Goku. When Goku fought Vegeta, he knew that fighting him was wasting time, as seen by him constantly begging Vegeta to stop fighting. And Goku has never held back his power when lives are on the line. So if Goku was acting in character, he would have easily overpowered Vegeta. But he didn't do that because that would ruin the tension and the pacing of the fight. Meaning that when the fight was originally written, Toriyama didn't invent Super Saiyan 3 till this moment. Meaning that it just popped out of thin air. Do you see why this sucks now? We're not even halfway through this arc and we already have two bullshit power-ups for Goku and a villain who is incredibly overpowered, which is why they need said power-ups. I'll get into that more later, but Jesus Christ. The cracks are forming. We're officially in bad arc mode. Also, why the hell does the Saiyan race have so many secret transformations? They got fucking Ozaru, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan 3, Super Saiyan 4. Like, what the fuck? So anyway, Trunks gets the thing and sends Goku fought Boo instead of getting the radar. He only has one hour left on Earth. Also, I want to talk about the fight um, a little bit. It's just bad. It just... It's not interesting, boring, it's kind of dumb, it's just, it's not good, it's not good. Anyway, Goku only has an hour left, and he teaches the fusion technique to Piccolo, so, Pic so Piccolo could teach it to the kids, instead of, like, teaching it to anyone else, but, you know, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Anyway, the fusion dance is, so here's how the fusion dance works, both people have to be equal in power and do the pose exactly correctly. And then they can only be fused for 30 minutes. It's pretty wacky and random, but okay. Goku leaves his kid in Piccolo's hands. Huh. I got this really strange sense of deja vu. Boo proves he is the MVP by finally killing Bobbity. Finally, a villain I can relate with. Anyway, everyone on Earth is kind of shitting themselves over the fact that a yet another super-powered alien thing is fucking with Earth. And they send Mr. Satan to deal with it. Also, Boo builds a house. At last, you have the vision to find my house! I feel like that's just an important detail. Alright, now time for the fight of the century. The World Martial Arts Champion! Versus a pink boy. This fight honestly is the most intense one yet. Mr. Satan tries everything. Punches, kicks, he even pulls a marshu and tries lamp oil, rope, bombs. But nothing works. The champ is unable to hurt Boo. And Boo can't bring himself to fight back due to Mr. Satan's overwhelming aura. But then Boo befriends Mr. Satan because Mr. Satan gives Boo candy. All right, we've finally done it. We've reached the best part of the Boo saga. And after this, it gets really, r really bad. I don't want to talk about it because it's really bad, but I have to because I made this video. But let's just focus on the here and now. So Boo shows Mr. Satan his house, and they end up becoming friends almost instantly. Mr. Satan teaches Boo about Earth, humanity, and animals, and Boo promises not to hurt anyone anymore as a sign of trust in his new friend. They even tame a stray dog. And right as Mr. Satan is going to break the news that he has befriended the monster, it would seem that the true monsters are only a few miles away. A hunter named Von Zond, I'm not calling him that, I'm just going to call him Blonde Boy, has noticed that there's a bounty on Boo's life. And with his partner, Smithy, they show up, and everything goes to hell. Seemingly for fun, the blonde guy shoots the dog. I won't let you get away with this! <laughs> Boo overhears this and sees two human beings trying to take away his one and only friend. And pause! Alright folks, we've reached the end of the good part! Everyone take- pack your bags, leave! It's over! Please leave! Please, I don't want to talk about it! <sighs> because this is the last part of the Boo Saga where anything makes sense. 
But for real, I actually really like this scene. It provides a lot of character development for both Boo and Mr. Satan. And their friendship is honestly the most wholesome part of DVZ. Why did I write ever in the script? Holy shit. Part 5, Super Boo, more like Super Bad, got him! So Boo becomes conflicted on his stance on humanity. Are they all nice like Hercule? Or is the entire species deplorable, with Mr. Satan being an exception? Boo literally splits in two over this internal debate, but not before healing Mr. Satan and the dog. And would you look at this guy! His name is Evil Boo, and, and boy is he an ugly motherfucker, but I kind of feel like that's the point. He, he looks like the exact opposite of the Boo we know. Well, I'm just gonna call him Good Boo for now on, to make this video non-confusing. As opposed to Good Boo's jolly, colorful, and Rubenesque appearance, this Evil Boo is thin, appears to be scowling, and he's dull. I like the contrast because it's just good character design. But it doesn't really make sense, right? How do you separate your body into two? It's never really explained. I mean, like, not even when Kami did it. But whatever, there's dumber shit in this arc to get mad at. So without further ado, let's get to good boo versus evil boo. So this fight happens and it's not even really noteworthy because it's pretty generic. I mean, I like this part where, the, where Good Boo emulates the Kamehameha, only to have Evil Boo respond with an evil Kamehameha. Eat your heart out, Zamasu. Anyway, Evil Boo wins and steals the essence of Good Boo, creating Patrick Star! I'll cut off your nutsack and nail it to my door! Damn, he hit the gym, look at him. Jokes aside, this is Super Boo. Though I fail to see what makes him so super. So you know all those criticisms I threw at Bobbity for being generic and how I liked Good Boo because he was different? Super Boo is just more of the same bullshit. I hope you guys love sneering, arrogant villains cause here's another one to throw into the collection. I mean toilet. Yeah, that's what I meant. Hell, at least Frieza was a composed arrogant villain. With each insult, you felt the weight of his power and all the people he's killed. And it helped because of the buildup he had. From the very beginning of the Namek Saga, you know one thing, that you don't fuck with this guy. Also, Frieza wrecks motherfuckers. He's the type of guy who would compliment you for killing a dog in an elegant way. And I mean, even if we are to look outside Dragon Ball, the arrogant villain trope is is a backbone of shonen anime. But it could still work, just look at Dio Brando. He works because the story develops him in an, in an interesting way, and he's there from the beginning. But by throwing a generic evil guy at us out of nowhere, you're essentially just guaranteeing that he'll land flat and that we won't give a shit about him. These types of villains only work if they're established early on, so that's why Super Boo falls flat. Now let's talk design. I hate it. Where did his jawline go? Both Good Boo and Evil Boo had jawlines, it just looks odd. He looks too skinny. Maybe Cell's tainted my expectations by being ripped. But also, this guy kinda just looks dumb. There's no other way- There's no other word to describe it, he just looks dumb. Anyway, Super Boo makes quick work of the blonde boy, and reverse Vor's Smithy? Why? Smithy didn't kill anyone. Hashtag Smithy did nothing wrong. And then Super Boo leaves. <laughs> apparently unable to kill Hercule and the dog. But not because of friendship or anything dumb like that. Because Mr. Satan has ULTRA INSTINCT! It just makes sense. Anyway, back to Gohan and the gang. Oh yeah, Kabito died, I forgot to mention that. My bad. Goku requests to help with his son tra- <sighs> With his son training. Goku requests to help with his son's training. What's he training in, I hear you maybe ask? I don't know, I'm bad at predictions. He's training with the Z-Sword. The Z-Sword. That's right, that's right. The Z in Dragon Ball Z, Z stands for his sword. Who would have guessed? But real talk, why are you training in sword combat when the guy you are training to fight can regenerate like it's nothing? And it's not like Shin doesn't know that. He fought Boo millions of years ago. Did you just forget that? What, what a fucking moron. Anyway, Goku tries to help but ends up breaking the sword, and an old man lives in the sword. Wow, I guess you could say he lives life on the edge. Alright, enough with the sharp comments. I have a point to make. Uh, oh, oh shit, those puns were unintentional. Or pun intentional. <laughs> <laughs> ah!
But anyway, this guy's literally just Master Roshi, but worse. At least Master Roshi had a heartfelt relationship with his students. But here, it's just the same joke over and over and over and over. Oh, fucking kill me, please. Speaking of shitty comedy, oh god. I'm not strong enough. Part 6. <laughs> I guess I have to talk about Go Tanks. So the boys are learning fusion and do it wrong to hilarious results. See, hilarious is in quotations because I fucking hate it. I'm sorry, we have a literal super powered alien on the loose. Why is it time to make these shitty jokes? That's the first problem I have with fusion in this arc. It only serves the purpose of making the pacing halt to a crawl. The tone was pretty serious up to this point, and by introducing two painfully unfunny comic relief characters, you're doing nothing but shooting the pace in the fucking head. And would you believe me if I told you it gets even worse? Thankfully, Piccolo saves the day by throwing these two morons into the room of spirit and time. Fuck you, that's what it's called. Once again, Piccolo proves himself a hero in front of his friends and family. They will never doubt his wisdom again. With the bad comedy out of the way, we can finally focus on- OH FUCK HE'S HERE ALREADY! So Piccolo, the smart strategist, thinks of a way to get Boo off of the lookout. He has a brilliant idea. He tells Boo to kill every single human on Earth. And then Boo does it. Once again, Piccolo proves to his friends and family that he is a menace to society and should never be taken seriously. And now we get to everyone's favorite part of the arc where everyone sits down and waits. Remember? The good pacing? Jesus Christ, it seems like it was here a century ago. Boo is waiting to fight Go Tanks. Gohan is waiting to be trained. Piccolo is waiting to be relevant. Yeah, yeah, that's why I watch Shonen. To watch people sit and wait for hours on end. <laughs> Kill me. But, but anyway, the room of spirit and time opens. Revealing the worst character in Dragon Ball history. Go Tanks has entered the chat. Jesus Christ, where do I even begin? So this fucker, after learning everyone just died, just casually decides to fly around the planet, might I ask? The fuck? This kid is half Goten, right? So why is he acting like an apathetic asswipe? He acts like a cocky piece of shit, and once again ruins the tension with his shitty comedy. It's not funny, it's just annoying. It's annoying as fuck. And you'll see what I mean when we get to... Gotenks versus Super Boo. All right, just gonna adjust my chair, drink some water, cause I'm gonna scream a lot. So Piccolo locks everyone in the room of spirit and time, despite the fact that there can only be two people in there at a time. They also make the claim that the room of spirit and time has decreased time compared to outside, aka one hour inside the room equals one minute inside the room, which is not how it works. It works the opposite. One day out here, one year in there. Or else the entire Cell Saga wouldn't be possible. How did you fuck that up? But anyway, I forgot to mention the most egregious thing about Gotenks. He claims he's better than you and dabs. Kill him. Quick side note, why is Boo letting them fuse? Please, please man, just kill them, please, please. I'm sorry about saying that you're a shitty villain. Please, please just do it. Please, I beg of you. Anyway, Gotenks punches Boo and Boo's not impressed. Then Gotenks tries a secret technique. Wacky, Wacky bullshit. And tries to blow up Boo with a kick and it doesn't work. Then Boo's eyes change to red, what the fuck? This is a trend with Super Boo, he just makes up random shit. We'll, we'll see this more later on. Anyway, Gotenks does more stupid shit that kills the pacing for way too long until he becomes a Super Saiyan. Finally, the fight begins after wasting our time for far too long. I'm just kidding, you know full well what he does. MORE WACKY BULLSHIT! Please, please just do something interesting! He does this dumb bullshit like the fucking Super Ghost Kamikaze attack. Quick question, HOW? That makes no sense! Can you make souls? Can Gotenks create souls? Is he God? How can you do that? Why can you do that? Remember when Dragon Ball made sense? Remember when characters had believable abilities and shit? And it gets worse. It gets so much fucking worse! So Boo, like me, has had enough of this dumb bullshit for a lifetime and fucks up Gotenks. Finally, a villain I can relate to! 
Anyway, Piccolo destroys the exit and Boo gets really pissed off and screams his way out of the room. Oh yeah, Mr. Krabs. What it, the fuck is happening? That doesn't even make sense. You can't just scream your way out of another dimension. That's that, that doesn't make any sense. That's stupid. That's fucking dumb. This is what I mean by the fact that Boo just makes up random shit, by the way. And we're not even to the worst part. Oh, God. So then the worst thing ever happens. So Gotenks, who is barely even a Super Saiyan, mind you, hasn't mastered the form at all, becomes Super Saiyan 3, which is just so wrong. It was bad when Goku did it, but Gotenks is barely even a Super Saiyan. How could he reach this form? How? Does the theme even mean anything anymore? Goten and Trunks are fucking kids. Between the both of them, you're telling me they have the power of a Super Saiyan 3. Why? You can't just give characters a free power-up when they become irrelevant. That's bad writing. If I wrote a play about a guy who gets handed everything on a silver platter whenever he was oppressed or ridiculed, that'd be the worst play of all time. Transformations in the series are so... are so... Transformations in the series are so satisfying because of the struggle the characters go through to get them. If Goku activated Super Saiyan 3 against Cell and obliterated him, that fight wouldn't make sense. It'd be boring. What the fuck? <sighs> anyway, Gotenks follows Boo and Boo starts dodging all of Gotenks' blows because Boo killed everyone by eating them and absorbing them? What the fuck? You're telling me he could absorb people too? Does that mean he absorbed Deborah? No, because Deborah's in heaven. But wait, that doesn't make sense because all the people that Boo killed are also in heaven. So he shouldn't have their powers. Oh my god. So wait, does this mean that only Super Boo can absorb people? But that doesn't make sense because later on we see Pure Boo absorb someone. Uh, because if... Good Boo didn't absorb Deborah, then oh my god. My I'm my brain is hurting. But it just doesn't make sense because all the boos are the same person. So why can Super Boo absorb people? This arc is killing me. We're not even to the worst part yet. Anyway, Gotenks uses an attack called Splitting Headache, and I think the bastard is starting to mock me. They fight back and forth for a really long time, and I couldn't give less of a shit. This might be the worst fight in all of Dragon Ball. It's just the same shit over and over again. It's the same wacky bullshit over and over and over and over and over again. And I can't be bothered to give a shit because thanks to this golden fucker, the tension is gone. We had legitimate tension when Boo killed everyone, but thanks to this guy stalling the pacing for his shitty jokes, we get nothing! Absolutely nothing! nothing. I feel nothing now, because I just know it's a joke! Society is a joke! This series is a fucking joke! This review is a fucking joke! Uh, Sorry about that. My head hurts a lot. Alright, anyway, on with the review. So anyway, Gotenks destroys the lookout and Piccolo is pissed about it because it's like where he lives. And But like, Piccolo doesn't really have any time to talk because he's responsible for the extinction of the human race. I'm sorry, we, we just need to... We need to talk about something that bothers me immensely. Part 7. Look how they mess with my boy. Look, this next part is going to be hard for me to talk about without sounding like a rage-induced fangirl. So, sit tight. Piccolo was one of the best characters in the series, and I can't even begin to explain this next part without you understanding that. Piccolo was born as the spawn of basically the devil, and when he was introduced, his first goal was to finish his father's work by killing son Goku. But when the Saiyans arrived on Earth, Piccolo realized that he needed to team up with Goku to make sure his, his world wasn't destroyed. And through that, we see what makes Piccolo work, the fact that he's able to put his life on the line for the greater good. 
During the Frieza saga, he allowed himself to get pummeled to buy some extra time for the spirit bomb. Even though he was introduced as evil, he was given empathetic traits. And this works because of his friendship with Gohan. Gohan made Piccolo realize that he isn't a monster, that he could in fact be good. And throughout the following sagas, he would remain a powerful character, holding off the likes of Cell and Android 17, showing that even though he didn't have any bullshit transformations, he was still relevant. And I need you to understand this before I explain to you, that Piccolo in the Boo Saga has some of the worst character assassination I have ever seen in my entire life. Piccolo starts out by doing nothing. Then against the Bora, he does nothing. Even though I joked about it earlier, this could have been an amazing opportunity to show how far Piccolo has come. He was able to match Android 17 in power, and we never really see any proof that he grows past that. Never, in any of the fights in Z, does Piccolo ever prove that he is relevant after Android 17. And the culprit of this is none other than is none other than my favorite rant piece, Gotenks. Piccolo is given the task of training Goten and Trunks, and that's it. He never gets a fight boo. All he does is train this annoying piece of shit. Imagine the Piccolo who defeated Android 17, who tried everything in his power to keep Earth safe. That Piccolo wouldn't just sit around and wait for the same lazy, boring, and annoying joke over and over again. The Piccolo we see in the Boo Saga is a joke. He's not a character, he's a plot device. He makes sure Goten and Trunks get trained. And after, and after everything, he's just a walking, talking reaction shot. He's an utter disappointment in every way imaginable. And this hurts the most for me because Piccolo used to be my favorite character. The way he became a hero in every sense of the world while also having problems with the main characters was unique and his strategy was unparalleled. And to see him as nothing more than a punchline is immeasurably disappointing. But not as disappointing as Part 8, Gohan. <laughs> so, Hotshot, you want to f Majin Buu? F*** you. No, I wanna f*** you. Ugh, I'm getting too old for this. Oh yeah, you knew this was coming. When you clicked on this video, you knew. You knew this was gonna happen. Let's get into it. So anyway, back to Gohan. This old guy says he could give Gohan a free power-up free of charge. It's just gonna be some more, you guessed it, wacky bullshit. This is so wrong. Stop the stupid bullshit. Also, Gohan getting a free power-up is dumb. At least on Namek it correlated with his increased confidence. Here, Gohan is only getting a free power-up because the plot demands it, and it only gets worse. Also, am I the only one who finds it incredibly contrived that Gohan not only found two people to train with who could make him stronger than Boo, but in breaking this sword, found a guy who can make him so incredibly powerful that fusion becomes irrelevant. Seriously, think about that. What the hell? Anyway, Gotenks loses against Boo, and Boo is about to kill them, but Gohan comes out of nowhere, and I kid you not, call Super Boo a retard. <laughs> This is so wrong on so many levels. The Gohan we are introduced to in the beginning was an was an empathetic good boy. The kind of guy who would break up a fight. This is wrong because Gohan would never do this. He even starts acting cocky as he fights Boo. This is so incredibly out of character. This Gohan has been shown to have the exact opposite traits, and this new form is not earned. This is a more powerful form than any other Super Saiyan form, but it isn't earned. So remember the Swapovich fight? Remember where Gohan couldn't do anything? This could have been his arc. His arc could have been about controlling his rage, the thing that saved him time and time again. What if the old Kai can only grant this form to people who are calm-minded? Then this fight against Boo would have made Boo realize that Gohan becomes weaker when he's angry. You could have Boo mock Gohan, and right as Gohan is going to lose, Videl would contact him from the from King Kai's world, telling him that she is all right and that he needs. To focus. Then you could have Gohan kill Super Boo and bam, bam, you have a good arc for Gohan. He learns to be a better hero by abandoning his Saiyan traits and becoming fully human. Bam! It isn't perfect, but it's better than just getting another by the books Dragon Ball transformation. This is the worst mistake of the arc. As many of you know, Gohan was intended to be the main character of this arc, but angry fans demanded that Goku returned, so 
Toriyama made Goten, but they still wanted Goku. So Gohan got this, a way that would push him out of the spotlight so his dad can return. He got a, he got a shiny paint job and he acts like Vegeta now. Is that what you wanted? Is, is this the Gohan you wanted? Did you want to see the sweet, innocent boy who would make friends with a literal demon man call someone a ret? Is, is that what you wanted? Jesus Christ, who the hell wrote this? Frank Miller? Hey, it's me, editor me again. I told you you'd hear from me again. Anyway, as I was editing this video, I came across the common belief that it's okay for Gohan to act like Vegeta now because he acted like Vegeta against Cell. Now, okay, okay. So before we address how dumb this is, let's just break down what Gohan was going through in the Cell games versus what he is going through right now. Okay, so in the Cell games, he is confronted with the fact that he is the only one alive who can stop Cell. And if he doesn't, everyone will die. His dad, his mom, his other dad, everyone will die. <laughs> No one will live. Cell will kill everyone. So that causes him to snap. And once he does, he becomes overwhelmed with power. And it takes the death of his father. Yes, the death of his father for him to realize that acting like that is bad. By the way, the father that he had recently spent a year with. I cannot stress this enough. These two people, even though they are the same person, act very differently. This Gohan was young and thought he was weak. So when he got this burst of power, of course he's gonna act like an arrogant little shit. He had basically been told by himself and by everyone else that he was weak and pathetic. This Gohan has gone through that experience and should know that acting like an arrogant little shit wastes time. So no, it is not justified for Gohan to suddenly act like Vegeta. It is not. I'm sorry. I know you've already typed it out. I know you've stopped watching the video by now. But no, it does not make sense. Anyway, listen to what I recorded um, uh, before I decided to do this little rant. Sorry. Bye-bye. Do you want to know why Gohan doesn't do anything in GT or Super? Because of this moment right here. Because after this, his character was so destroyed that the writers didn't know what to do after that. Do you embrace Gohan's arrogant side? No, because that's not fun to watch. Or do you regress him back to the Saiyaman saga, which is character regression. So that's why he doesn't do anything. Can you see why I'm angry at this arc now? Over 30 minutes into this video? Gohan could have been so much more. And that's why when I watch this fight, I feel nothing but disappointment. Super Boo versus Gohan. So Gohan arrives, and he just beats up Boo. And as I said before, he acts like Vegeta now. Because this isn't a Gohan fight. This is a Vegeta fight masquerading as a Gohan fight. Vegeta fights always end the same way. Him cockily picking apart his opponent only for him to get stomped. And because of this, because Gohan needed to be shifted into a Vegeta, his character has been killed. Ultimate Gohan was the worst thing to ever happen to him. Anyway, time to stop talking about how much I hate how Gohan was handled in this arc. And time to start talking about Super Buu again. Oh god. So Boo realizes that he's more fucked than your mother. Uh huh, I did the joke. And pulls another new technique out of his ass. He absorbs Piccolo -O and Gotenks. Jesus Christ, why did they refuse? Also, this is literally just Cell all over again. Except when Cell did it, it was original. Boo is just ripping him off. Because once he absorbs Piccolo, he just starts acting arrogant like Cell too. He even steals his techniques, his monologues about strength, but the one thing he can't steal is Cell's jawline. But anyway, Goku asks the Kais if there's anything he could do to help, and then the old Kai gives Goku his life? What the f- Fuck. Can you just sacrifice yourself to give people your life? That's not how anything works, ever. Maybe it's like a Kai exclusive thing, but even then, what about all those Kais that Shin lost and are now like dead? Oh wow, couldn't you have brought them back by sacrificing your life? I don't know. 
What the fuck is this? I mean, if you could sacrifice your life for other people, what the hell is the point of Dragon Balls? And I get it, being dead sucks, but you're a Kai. It's not exactly like you're going to do much anyway. Then Shin gives Goku these Patara earrings, which confuse people permanently, and it's diff and it's different than the fusion dance because say you're at level nine and you wanted to fuse with someone at level two. If you use Patara earrings, you would become a level 18. But if you wanted to use the fusion dance, you would have to lower your power level to that of two. So thus your fusion would only be a four. You see, it's like, it's better. So Gohan is getting his ass kicked and Goku shows up to give Gohan the earring, but Gohan doesn't catch it and, get his, and gets absorbed. A lot of people hate this moment, but I just can't care anymore. Also, is it really that surprising that Gohan failed to catch it? Do you honestly think Goku played any games of catch with Gohan? But anyway, now, Boo has a jawline. Is there anyone who could defeat his power and- OH SHIT! TN SHOWS UP! HE'S GONNA FUSE WITH GOKU?! HOLY SHIT! IMAGINE THE KIKO KAMEHAMEHA! It'd be so powerful, no one could survive, it would have limitless power- Oh, TN dies. Rest in peace, sweet prince. I hope you finally buy Chiaotzu a happy meal in the next life. Anyway, Goku has limited options. He knows that his only hope is to fuse with the champ! Such a being would be unstoppable. Imagine the wrestling matches. But Toriyama realizes that that would be too overpowered, so he decides to bring back Vegeta. So together, they make the best fusion ever. Don't even at me, Vegito. Yes, that is how I spell it. Part 9, I actually kind of like this part. I, I know that's weird considering all the ranting and the fact that this video is called Why the Boo Saga Sucks, but I actually like this part. So, as I mentioned, I really like Vegito. He has both Vegeta's arrogance and Goku's empathy. I also like his getup. He looks like Mario. Alright, time for Super Boo Tanks, Kolo Han... Fuck it. Super Boo versus Vegito. I actually like this fight, because it's funny without killing the pacing. To be clear, I don't hate comic relief characters, far from it, but when said characters ruin the pacing of the story being told for a shitty joke, it makes me feel like you're wasting my time. That's why I don't like Gotenks, and that's why I like Vegito. First off, Boo gets his ass kicked without any character assassination. Nice. Vegito is toying with Boo, but he's also not wasting time, and he's also trying to find a way to save everyone that Boo has absorbed. And even when he gets turned into candy, he's still a badass! Ah, the sweet taste of vengeance. And then purposefully gets absorbed to save his family. This is why Vegito is cool as fuck and why Gotenks sucks. So once Vegito gets absorbed, he infuses into Goku and Vegeta. I actually kind of like this part though. This is the only time these two have interacted without wanting to fight each other and I actually really like it. I love Goku's stupidity and hopefulness contrast with Vegeta's arrogance and, and Napoleon complex. I also like Vegeta's fear of worms, it's amazing. Eventually they find all the people that Boo has absorbed except for Krillin, Android 18, Bulma, Videl, Yamcha, but whatever. Anyway, Super Boo starts to fight them inside his head, which sounds pretty stupid, but it's actually a pretty fun fight. Super Boo versus Goku and Vegeta. This is fun because Boo is basically invincible and they have to find out cool ways to hurt him, until Vegeta threatens to steal away Good Boo, who is the source of his power, kind of. So Goku and Vegeta take out everyone out of Boo's head, and without the power of Good Boo, Super Boo dies. Yay, we did it gang, he's dead! And what is born in place is Boo's original form, Pure Boo. It's a better name than Kid Boo, so I'm using it. Anyway, Pure Boo blows up the earth, along with everyone still on it. Except for Mr. Satan, of course. I would have a problem with this, because we literally just spent the last few episodes trying to save these guys only for them to die. But I forgive it because this next fight is the only fight I like against any Boo form. So yeah. So anyway, Goku and Vegeta are transported to the world of the Kais, and Pure Boo follows them because he can teleport. How many powers do you have? All right, time for the fight I like: Pure Boo versus Goku and Vegeta. So Vegeta shows some amazing character development by letting Goku fight Boo on his own. Goku powers up to Super Saiyan 2 and fights Boo, who is sleeping, but then wakes up and starts pounding his chest like a gorilla. Goku doesn't waste any time in trying to destroy him, but Boo regenerates and laughs at him. I actually really like Pure Boo, cause he doesn't talk, and he's evil as fuck and enjoys killing people because he's just a force of death. Like, look at this dude's smile. 
you could tell exactly how many people he kills. And I just love that, like, nothing matters to him. He just thinks that killing things is the most fun thing in the world. And you don't need any monologues to show that. Just, like, look at this dude's fucking face. Or, like, Later, when he beats the shit out of Vegeta and starts laughing at him, it's actually pretty scary. You know what, if you ask me, we should have just had this guy from the beginning. No stupid boo, no fucking bobbity, just pure boo. That would have been amazing. I would have liked that arc, this video wouldn't have even existed. But anyway, Boo starts beating the shit out of Goku, with Goku only being able to retaliate every once in a while. Anyway, Boo shows off his stretch abilities by moving his foot through the floor to try to kick Bo- Boku! <laughs> I'm trying to kick Goku. I really like this fight because it does a great job of making Goku feel outnumbered, even though he's fighting one guy. Everything he throws at Boo is easily countered to the fact that he has to use his most taxing form, Super Saiyan 3. And when he does, Vegeta shows even more development by actually complimenting Goku. Boo and Goku clash again and again, but this time it's Boo who is outmatched. Super Saiyan 3 is just too much for the little guy and eventually he has to resort to making multiple copies of himself just to Goku's strain. But this doesn't last forever, as Super Saiyan 3 takes its toll, because it's, it's just pretty much a useless form. Goku falls down due to exhaustion, but now it's Vegeta's time to shine. So the plan is to use the Namekian Dragon Balls to wish back Earth and all the people on it, and to give Goku his energy back. But Vegeta has to buy some time for that plan to work. Vegeta powers up to Super Saiyan 2 and Boo starts beating him up. But Vegeta gets up over and over again. He isn't going to let this little gumdrop beat the shit out of him again. He actually also kind of scares Pure Boo. And three wishes later, Goku starts charging the spirit bomb. But it seems like there isn't much life left in the universe for it to work properly. So, Mr. Satan calls out to the people of Earth to lend Goku his energy. The spirit bomb grows to the size of a meteorite as Goku throws it. He wishes to fight Boo again, but you know, without everyone dying next time... That would be preferable. The people of Earth have given their energy to Goku to kill the being who had killed them. Which is why I always debate people on on who killed Kid Buu. Goku didn't kill Kid Buu. We killed Kid Buu. I mean, pure Buu. God damn it. I can't even stick to my own rules. So yeah, I actually liked that ending. I like how the spirit bomb killed pure Buu. Because he is pure evil after all. So naturally, it should kill him. I really like the ending and I just wish that I didn't have to suffer through the majority of this arc to get to it. And let's just pause for a second. See, originally in the script, I wanted to end things here, with an overall rant about why these parts didn't work, but then I realized that I skipped over something crucial. I skipped over the end of it all. The end of Dragon Ball Z. And it's such a big reason why I think the Boo Saga just doesn't work. So let's talk about it. Years have passed since the defeat of Kid Boo, or Pure Boo as I called him originally, and Vegeta's had a kid, Goku is basically by himself, well, with Chi Chi, again, Goten is like 20 and still has nothing going on for him. Trunks is basically just himself from the future, taking away all the traits I liked from him, and Gohan and Fidel have a baby, which is a change I actually like. The World Martial Arts Tournament is coming again so they decide just for old times sake to have one final bout and then they see him a kid with a similar power sh level to Kid Buu and Goku immediately recognizes him and in their fight Goku tries to aggravate him to get him to show his power and through this they become friends Goku then takes this kid goes off to train him and that is the end of the series might I ask what the fuck this is literally a random guy Goku just met. A random person. And yeah, Goku has always been nice to strangers. I'm not saying that this is out of character. I'm saying that in this final moment that he wanted to be with his friends and family, he decided to ditch all of them to train this random kid. Which I don't personally think is very Goku. Go, rewatch Z if you will. Even though a lot of people like to joke about Piccolo being Gohan's real dad, 
Goku still very clearly cares for him and, you know, is kind of sad that he died and let basically his arch enemy torture him for a year. So, yeah, I don't think this is very, um, Goku y. Also, let's finally talk about the theme and why this ending doesn't work. So, in the end of the Saiyan saga, we're faced with the question should Vegeta live or should he die? He hasn't killed anyone yet and he fully intends to kill people. The obvious choice would just be to like Krill and kill him. But Goku, while he was on King Kai's planet, while he was in heaven, learned something. Forgiveness. And I'm saying he learned it there because before then he never showed it. Whenever he came across someone who wanted to kill him, he'd just kill them first. Meaning he either learned this from King Kai or Kami, and he spares Vegeta. This means Goku has effectively learned something new. It is a change for his character. So then when he fights Frieza, and he tries to apply that change, he tries to spare Frieza, it ends up blowing up in his face. He learns that although saving people is good, maybe not everyone can be saved. You see how Toriyama did that? He introduced a change to the character and then changed it again. This is what we like to call in the industry, character development. At the end of the Cell games, Goku realizes that he was wrong about his son, that his son doesn't like fighting, that he was wrong, that maybe violence is just a path for only him and a select group of his friends, and forcing it onto people is, well, almost as bad as Cell. So he sacrifices himself to save his son, which shows immense character growth from the guy who used to want to fight literally everyone and thought a car was a monster. This is where Goku's arc should have ended. Goku realizing that he was ultimately wrong, but it kept going, didn't it? And now we have this, an arc where Goku didn't learn anything. The entirety of this arc, Goku has done literally nothing but impose the same ideology that he did in the Cell games, and he's proven right. Fighting is the answer to all of your problems. This is bad. This is bad writing. When I was a kid all those years ago, when he came back for that one day, first thing that went through my head was, how is he going to talk to Gohan? He had basically left everyone for seven years. Does Gohan forgive him, or does Goku have to deal with it? Does Goku originally try non-violent methods to stop Boo, like the Mafuba, or, I don't know, teaching more than one person fusion? But no, he just tries to punch Boo a lot, three times, and he's proven right by the end of it. This is character regression. Goku learned that fighting isn't always the answer, and then the story said, no way, actually it is. We need to kill this guy, even though in a brief moment, it looked like mercy was the answer. It looked like maybe Boo could be talked to, that maybe there is a difference between fighting for the sake of personal growth and fighting for the sake of hurting someone. But no, we can't have that, now can we? And it in fact makes the entirety of the Boo saga kind of pointless, doesn't it? No one really learns anything, except for Vegeta, who was already going down that path anyway. And if you really want to be an asshole about it, Boo didn't teach him that, Bobbity did. Piccolo, here's what he learns. He's never going to be strong enough to ever compete with Goku again, so he doesn't. Gohan learns that, yeah, maybe fighting isn't the answer, and then never does anything again. Videl learns that she should just give up being a superhero and just becomes a walking, talking womb for another Saiyan, just like Chi Chi and just like Bulma. Krillin does nothing. Tien does nothing. All of these characters who are all determined, like Goku, to perfect their martial arts skills, to become the, the best possible person they could be, they just decide to give up. And this echoes in Dragon Ball GT and Super. In Dragon Ball GT, the only real person to ever really solve anything is Goku, who again, doesn't learn anything. He learns that yeah, fighting is the answer. It worked that one time. Even Oob, the, the person that we introduced as a literal opposite of Boo, he doesn't learn anything. You know, the reason why I shit on GT so consistently is because it, it isn't really an extension of the story. Is it? It's really just a couple of side movies put into arcs. All of them are so sudden, and the ending isn't even really about GT, it's about Z. Dragon Ball Super, for a good 40% of it, is only about Goku and Vegeta. The only two people who are allowed to do anything anymore. Until, and this is where Super prevailed, until the Tournament of Power, where all of these characters finally got to do something of their own.
film finally got to be part of the story being told again. They had to wait till the very last arc to finally come up with the reason as to why these characters would want to exist. And I hope for, you know, the series sake that it keeps going down that path. I am a fan of storytelling. I really honestly am. Every snide joke that I throw in this way isn't, you know, can be seen as me being like, huh, it's a fucking kid show, but I really, really care. And by doing this, and by having an ending where the main character effectively learns nothing, it just makes the entire experience feel pointless. That's why the Boo Saga sucks. It introduces a bunch of neat concepts, it makes you feel like you're going on another adventure, but you're not. All you're doing is watching character regression and a bunch of overpowered people screaming at each other. So, yeah. If you enjoyed watching this video, like, comment, subscribe, you know, the YouTube thing. Um, if you like my style of editing, thank you. I put a lot of effort into it this time. And, um, if you like the Boo Saga, tell me why. If you think I was wrong, don't hesitate to comment. You know, if I overlooked something that you really like, then let me know about it. And if you want me to see me review any more Dragon Ball properties, I might do it in the future. I'm not against it. I mean, I like a lot of Dragon Ball, and don't like a lot of it too. It's sort of like Star Wars, except I have a healthier relationship with it. So yeah, anyway, this has been me, person with a bad username. Goodbye. Ugh, I'm getting too old for this.